Morning all. Thank you for joining us this morning. So in this session today, as you probably know, we're going to run through the statement of cash flows. So it will be recorded this and we'll send out the recording after so that you've got that to refer back to. Um, and then what we'll do is the, the format here, we'll run through the, the session, we'll run through an example so that you know what you're doing, and then we'll stop recording and it will give you the chance to ask any questions. So what we'll do now is we'll swap over to the document and we'll start running through what the statement of cash flows is. Excellent. So what we'll do is just to start off with, let's just talk about what cash actually is. So I think you will be familiar um, so far as you've been through your AAT, particularly in level two, with preparing a statement of profit or loss and a statement of financial position. But what we'll be doing today, like I say, is covering the statement of cash flows. So within your PL, I think you'll be aware that it shows you your profitability. And for the majority of businesses, obviously, the main aim is to create a profit. And then within your statement of financial position, you'll be aware that it shows your assets and liabilities, and that shows the financial strength of the company. Now, the statement of cash flows effectively shows how much money has been paid in and paid out of the business throughout the year. And it's important to note that your cash is different from your profit. And that is because we have non it, sorry we have non cash items that are included within the profit or loss. So the main two that I'm referring to here we've got non current assets which are paid through cash, but we know are not included within the profit or loss, but they're actually included within the statement of financial position as they're recorded as assets. We also know that on these we record depreciation each year. And that is recorded within your PL, but we know that that is not a cash transaction. It is just an accounting adjustment for the loss on your non current assets. So, what we need to do is when we're preparing our statement of cash flows, we need to adjust for these items. So, we have two different methods of preparing your statement of cash flows. We have the direct method and we have the indirect method. Now, for AAT, they focus on the indirect method. So, that is what we'll focus on in today's session. Just to say, when you are using the direct method of creating the statement of cash flows, you are basically constructing it from nothing. Whereas for the indirect method, which is what we'll run through, you are effectively taking your PL and working back from the PL and adjusting it to be able to create your statement of cash flows. So your statement of cash flows is made up of three separate sections. We have the cash from operating activities, we have the cash from investing activities, and the cash from financing activities. And as I say, we'll use the PL, or we'll start with the business's PL, and we will adjust this to be able to get back to the net cash from operating activities. Now, there's two places in which you can start from, from the PL, and that's the profit before tax figure and the profit from operations figure. The one they tend to use within AAT is the profit before tax figure, although we can use, as I said, the profit from operations. But within this session, we will specifically talk about working back from the profit before tax figure. So to start off with, what we're going to do is just run through the format. So this is just how it will look both in this example that we're about to work through, and this is how it will look in your exam as well. So we'll, as I say, we'll work through the format and what's to be included and what you need to do, and then we'll put that into a practical example. So we will start with your profit before tax figure, and this will just be taken straight from your PL. 
And then for your top section, what we'll do is then we will adjust this to remove any non-cash items and any adjustments to get back to your cash generated by operations figure. So we'll run through each of these uh, so you know what we're doing with each of them and whether if it's increased or decreased, you need to know, as I say, whether to take it off or add it on. So we'll start out with the profit before tax figure. And then let's have a look at the adjustments we need to make. So firstly, we need to add back the depreciation figure. As I've mentioned before, this is not a cash transaction and therefore needs to be added back in. We then add back on the finance costs. So this would be the interest. Now, we will later take this off. So just bear with me for now. But for now, we just need to add the cost back in. We will then take off any gains on disposal of plant and equipment or add it on if you've made a loss because it's not an operating activity. We'll then take out any dividends received again because it's not a operating activity. Now for any adjustments for inventory, if the inventory has increased throughout the year, we've paid more out and therefore we need to take it off. If your inventory has decreased, we effectively have more cash, so we need to add it on. When adjusting for trade receivables, if the trade receivables figure has increased, we need to take this off. And if the trade receivables figure has decreased, then we need to add it on. Then for your trade payables figure, if this has increased, we need to add this back. And if it has decreased, we need to take it off. Now, once we've made those adjustments, we'll be left with our cash generated by operations figure. And then all we need to do is take out our interest paid for the year and the tax paid for the year. Now, the tax paid for the year will not be the figure from the PL. It is the actual physical tax that has been paid out throughout the year, which we will come on to shortly. So once you've made these final adjustments, that will leave you with your net cash from operating activities. So that completes section one of your statement of cash flows. We then move on to section two, which is your investing activities. So within your investing activities, we will show any purchases of property, plant and equipment, any proceeds on disposals of property, plant and equipment, and any dividends received. And from this, that will give us our net cash from investing activities. And then the third part of this is your net cash from financing activities. And this will include any increases or decreases in share capital, any increases or decreases in loans, and any dividends that have been paid. And once we've completed those three, that will give us the net cash from financing activities. There is then one final stage, and that is to do a small reconciliation, which will show us the net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents throughout the year. And that is effectively taking your net cash from operating activities, adding it to your net cash from investing activities and adding that to your net cash from financing activities. And the three combined will give us the net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents. That should then reconcile between your cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year and the cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year. Now, the good thing about doing this is we usually know whether we've got this right, because we will often within the question be given the cash 
at the beginning of the year and the cash at the end of the year. So we should be able to check whether we've done this right or not, because the difference between those two should be your net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents throughout the year. Right, excellent. So what we will do now is we will put this into an example. So there is gonna be quite a lot of information on this, but don't panic, we will work through it step by step. So we've been given here a profit and loss and other statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And we've also been given a statement of financial position. And the business is Parison Limited. And we're working on the year end 31st of December. We then have, as you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, some further information. And and we will need that as we work through the question. Okay, so your further information you'll see is on the bottom left corner underneath your PL. Right then, so our job is to prepare the reconciliation for the profit before tax. So we are working from the profit before tax figure to the net cash from operating activities. And then from there, prepare the statement of cash flows for Parison Limited for the year end 31st of December. Right. So the first figure is your profit before tax figure. So we can take this from the PL. So let's just show you that there. So that would be apologies. which would be your profit before tax figure that I've highlighted there for you. So we can just enter that in. There will be a little bit of scroll in here. So that was eight, seven, six. Let's try that again. Apologies for my handwriting there. Right, the adjustments we have then are for depreciation. So if we scroll back up, within our further information, it says the depreciation charge for the year was 380,000. Now, one tip here, just to be careful of, and this is something that catches people out in the exam, remember that our figures are in thousands. So let me just... Yeah. Okay, so that is really important to take note of because within our financial statements, so within the statement of profit or loss and comprehensive income, you can see that they're in thousands. And in the statement of financial position, they're also in thousands. Okay, but within the first the further information, you can see that that is shown as 380,000. So when we enter that in, we just need to show that as 380. Okay. Okay. Next on the list, we have the gain on disposal of PPE. So if we go back up, we can see that within the PL, we have the gain on disposal. So it's just underneath our gross profit figure, and it is for 20,000. So we can enter that in. We then have dividends received. which was 40,000, again, taken straight from the PL under our gross profit figure. 
So we can enter that in. We then have our finance cost, which is the interest paid. So you've got your finance cost just, just underneath your profit from operations. So it's your minus 46, they were 46,000. So we can add those back in. Right, now comes our adjustments. So we'll always have, when you're doing your, your statement of cash flows, an adjustment to your inventory, trade receivables, and trade payables. So let's take these because we're now going to be working from a statement of financial position. So we can see here that we have our inventory, trade and other receivables, and trade and other payables. So we need to take, as we can see, we've got the previous year and this year. Now, for your inventory, we can see that that has decreased throughout the year. So if it's a decrease, i.e. we bought, we have less inventory, that means we have more cash. So the difference between these two would be 38,000. So we can enter that in. We then have our adjustment for trade receivables. And we can see that the trade receivables has increased. And the increase is 576,000. So we can enter that in. And then our trade payables. Which have increased. This will then give you your cash generated by operations figure. Seven hundred thirty two thousand. We then need to calculate the actual amount of tax paid. So as I said earlier, this wouldn't be the tax figure that was taken from the PL. We need to calculate this. So we need the tax figure that was brought down at the start of the year, and that will be taken from your statement of financial position. So we have here, just highlight this for you, your tax payable. OK, and the figure that was brought down at the start of the year would be your 212. So it's this figure here. And then your. Apologies.
Then you need your PL figure, which is the 250. So this figure here. And then the balance carried down, which again we can take from the statement of financial position. So it's the 250 here. And we can then total those, which comes to 212. So that would be the actual tax paid throughout the year. So we can enter that in. And then lastly, we have the interest paid, which we can take from the PL, which is your finance costs. So it is this 46, let's highlight that, 46 here. Okay, which will then give us our net cash from operating activities. which is four, seven, four. Okay, so that was just to confirm the seven, three, two, minus two, one, two, minus 46. Okay, excellent. Right, so that covers off Part A, which is preparing the reconciliation of profit before tax to net cash from operating activities. Right, so we can just enter in our 474 here. So this is just carrying it on down now. So 474, which we've just calculated. And we can now work on our investing activities section. So the first one on there is dividend received, which we can take from the PL. So it is your 40. We then can calculate our proceeds on disposal. And to do this, we'll need to have a look at our further information. So it says property, plant and equipment costing 340,000 with accumulated depreciation of 108,000 was sold throughout the year. So if we had property, plant and equipment that's cost for 340,000, and it had accumulated depreciation of 180, the net book value would have been 160,000. Okay, and this is looking for the proceeds on disposal. So if the net book value was 160,000, and we had a gain on disposal of 20,000, which is here within the PL that would mean that the proceed was 180,000. So let me just show you that. So we had three hundred and forty thousand was the cost, less the accumulated depreciation equaled 160 plus the gain of 20 means that the proceeds would be 
180. We then need to calculate our purchases of property, plant and equipment. And to do that, we have a workings box down here. So we start off with the property, plant and equipment at the start of the year. So we can see that that we can take straight from the statement of financial position, which is your 2,020,000. So we can enter that. The depreciation charge we can get from the notes. So remember that was 380,000. And then the carrying amount, which we've just actually calculated when we were doing the proceeds on disposal was 160,000. And I'll just show you that again as well. So to get that, it was this section here within the further information. So property, plant and equipment costing 340,000 had accumulated depreciation of 180. So if I just go back down here. It was your 340 minus 180 to give you a carrying amount of 160. The revaluation, again, we get that from our further information. So it says land has been revalued and has increased by a value of 200,000. So that is our revaluation amount. And then the property plan and equipment at the end of the year will be able to take straight from the statement of financial position. And it is this figure here. OK, we can now calculate what our total property plant and equipment additions were throughout the year. From the above figures. And that comes to. 680. So we can now enter that in. And calculate our net used, uh, our net cash used in investing activities. So that would be your 40 plus 180 minus 680 to give you minus 460. So we've now completed our net cash from operating activities and our net cash used in investing activities. So the last section is our financing activities. So the first figure on there is repayment of bank loans. So let's scroll up and we'll be able to get that information from our statement of financial position. And the figures that we want to be looking at are these two, so our bank loan figures. And we can see that it started out as 300 and we now are, have a, a balance of 100. So we've therefore paid off 200,000 in loans. So we can enter that in.
The next figure then is your proceeds from share issues. So again, let's go back to our statement of financial position. And there's two areas that we need to look at here, and that is the share capital and share premium. So we can see that we've got an increase throughout the year on both of these, so that we've, we've clearly issued shares throughout the year. So we just need to calculate the difference between these two sets of figures, and that will give us the amount of proceeds from shares issued throughout the year. So we can see that the difference between these two is 400. And the increase in these two is 90. So add those two together. And that would be our proceeds from shares issued. So that would be 490. Next comes our dividend paid. So we should be able to get that from above. So that is within our further information. So this section here, dividend was paid for 80,000. So you can enter that in. We can now work out our net cash from financing activities. So we've got minus 200 plus the 490 minus the 80 to give us net cash from financing activities of 210. Right then, next we can calculate, so this is the final section, our net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents. So to do that, we take our net cash from operating activities. So our 474, we actually got it on this screen as well. Our net cash from investing activities and our net cash from financing activities. OK, and we want to add the three together. So we've got 474 minus 460 plus 210. And that would give us a net increase in cash of 224. So the very last bit then. It wants to know the cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year and the cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year. So we can get both of those figures from our statement of financial position. OK, so we have cash at the start of the year, which is there, and cash at the end of the year. So we can enter those in. So it was 20 and 244. And like I say, this is one of the best things about being able to do these is that you can sort of check whether you've got it right. It's not 100%. There could be other errors, but equally it is a good check because we can see that the difference between the cash at the beginning of the year and the cash at the end of the year comes to 224, which is the same as our net increase in cash and cash equivalents. Excellent. And that covers how to complete a statement of cash flow. If anyone does have any questions, obviously feel free to send any emails through. What we'll do is we'll send out a recording as well. Um, like I say, if you can't think of anything right now, that's absolutely fine. But do feel free to, to email in if you if you do have any questions at all. But I hope this has helped. And thank you for, uh, for coming on to the session today. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.